Breakthrough Parenting, Moving Your Family from Struggle to Cooperation. Lesson 3.1, Understanding the Source of Behavior. Look beneath the surface behavior. When parents focus only on their children's behavior without looking at its root cause, they fail to see the whole picture. Without understanding the real cause of the behavior, their interpretation has a wide margin for error. A misinterpretation can easily result in a frustrating attempt to solve a problem that has not been accurately defined. Focusing on your child's behavior alone is like seeing a part of an iceberg that floats above the water and thinking that that's all there is. We are all used to drawing conclusions and forming opinions. By merely observing our children's behavior, we have some information, but by no means all of it. There is more to any situation than meets the eye. Few parents are trained to look more deeply into their children to see what underlying thoughts, feelings, and needs are the sources of their behavior. Let us look at the iceberg. The part of the iceberg that floats above the waterline is the behavior that is visible. Under the surface are our feelings, thoughts, and needs that are the true causes of our behavior. Notice that only the tip of the iceberg is visible above the water. What actually causes the behavior is invisible beneath the surface. By delving deeper than the obvious behavior to its source at the feelings, thoughts, and need levels, parents are rewarded with a true understanding of their children's behavior and can then communicate with them more successfully. With sufficient information, parents can accurately assess their children's needs. Behavior is a symptom, not a cause. For example, a sore throat is a symptom of an infection. You cannot cure the sore throat until you cure the infection. When your daughter is crying at the market, commanding her to stop will not address the cause of her crying. Perhaps she feels unsafe, tired, or hungry. Perhaps she could not see you for a moment and thinks you have left her behind. These are all real concerns for a child. So your response to her behavior matters. If you really want her to stop crying, take the time to understand her thoughts, feelings, and needs. Addressing behavior alone will not work. One needs to look for the cause of the behavior. And it takes skill to identify what is really going on. Remember, behavior is a symptom. Thoughts and feelings. When an event occurs, immediately humans react with thoughts and feelings. Our reactions are automatic. They're not consciously chosen. And they are based on our past experiences. It takes discipline and observation to become aware of our thoughts and feelings and to change them in order to support us in behaving in more optimal ways and in living happier and more fulfilling lives. Thoughts and feelings are very closely linked. Our thoughts directly affect our feelings. When we interpret something as good, we respond with happiness. When we interpret a situation as bad, we are unhappy. Our thoughts and feelings then determine our behavior. An event can provoke either emotional response, depending on our interpretation of it. Here's an example. A car backfires and makes a loud popping noise. Ralph, who fought in Vietnam War, hears the sound and is reminded of gunfire in Vietnam. He reacts to the sound by becoming tense. While Linda, hearing the exact same sound, interprets the sound very differently based on her own life experiences. She reported, I was reminded of firecrackers we used to shoot off as kids. I actually felt happy when I heard the car backfire. Both Ralph's and Linda's emotional reactions are created by the thoughts that go through our minds as the event occurs. Each person's interpretation of the event is based on his or her previous life experience. Needs. A need is something that a person has to have in order to live. It is not a want, a wish, or a desire. A need is mandatory for a person's very survival. For example, air to breathe, water to drink, 
and food to nourish the body. Other examples of needs are having basic shelter and getting medical care when sick. People also need to be touched lovingly and to be treated with respect. Laura, who is six, is playing at the park when a strange dog runs up to her. When she sees the dog, she thinks, that dog is going to bite me. She feels afraid and begins to scream. In order to understand the source of behavior, we need to have a solid knowledge of how the emotional duality of love and fear works. How feelings work. Today, there are numerous people who still cannot identify more than a few feelings like anger, sadness, or happiness. They simply have not learned the language necessary to identify their emotions, much less how to express them. Therefore, their feelings are a mystery to them. But it doesn't have to be a mystery because the world of feelings is not hard to understand. One of the most profound breakthroughs in human relationships has been learning to value each other's emotional states and helping each other to feel better, not worse, about our lives. How we feel about each other, our children, ourselves, can dramatically affect the quality of our lives. Love and fear are two primary emotions from which all other emotions stem. Happiness, sorrow, jealousy, rage, frustration, and joy are all secondary emotions. Love. The essence of love is present in everything we strive for in life. Well-being, happiness, joy, fulfillment, comfort, and peace of mind. When people experience love, they feel balanced, energized, healthy, peaceful, joyful, fulfilled, and in harmony with others. Without love, people feel the opposite. Love requires action. Love that is silent isn't sufficient. Love needs to be expressed in a way that allows another to experience its presence. Love is an energy that moves from the inside outward by expressing it. Love between parents and children is fundamental to healthy families. Fear. Fear is the essence of what every man, woman, and child wishes to minimize in his or her life. Fear is an energy that is uncomfortable, frustrating, and upsetting. In a state of fear, the body moves into fight or flight or freeze stress response. The chronic experience of fear tears down the well-being of the mind, body, and creates anxiety and low self-esteem. The amount of dysfunction in a family is in direct proportion to the degree of fear that the parent and child experience with each other. What this means is that the greater the fear, the greater the dysfunction. The more a child is afraid, the greater the dysfunction in the family. Fear is a primary source of misery in families and shows itself in many different ways, such as withdrawal, depression, anger, aggression, resentment, and in acts of belittling others. Love and fear. Love is comfortable, happy, trusting, connected, peaceful. Fear is uncomfortable, unhappy afraid, alone, and troubled. Everyone naturally moves between the states of love and fear, harmony and disharmony, balance and being out of balance. Children automatically move into disharmony at specific developmental stages throughout childhood. Difficult times throw all people off balance. This is natural. Anger. Anger is a secondary emotion. Fear is a primary emotion. Every angry person is feeling afraid. Remembering that anger is a secondary emotion can help reduce the amount of stress you experience when you see angry behavior. If you learn to address directly the fear that is the source of the anger, then you'll help to understand why you're angry and to control your anger. Suppose you are driving along the highway and someone suddenly cuts you off. 
What is the first thing you feel? Anger? No. The very first thing is fear. Fear of losing your life. Fear of having an accident. Or fear of hurting someone else. Your adrenaline and energy levels peak. And the next split second, you see that you haven't died nor had an accident. And the feeling of fear turns to anger. Then you might use up some of that adrenaline by yelling, cursing, or making an obscene gesture. Fear is a very powerful motivator that quickly moves us out of balance. By addressing the fear, rather than the anger in fact, we begin to address the real problem and the anger dissipates. Remember, the cause of anger is always fear. So just learn to address the fear first so that you can control your anger. End of lesson 3.1. Keep up the good work.